stranded during a Christmas blizzard by Mr. Sophistication. Hello, my name is Jack and I'm 18 years old. I would like to recount a personal story that scarred me mentally for life. I was 16 years old and it was the day before school shut down for winter break. Naturally, everyone was very excited, so the mood was great that day. Despite that, the weather was awful. It was extremely cold, windy. Dark clouds shrouded the sun and killed off any hope for warmth. Nevertheless, I was dressed nicely with my black overcoat, jeans, a nice pullover and my boots. Nothing could pierce my personal little shield of coziness. It was the last period when it got much darker than before, and the blizzard, which we expected to begin at noon, had already started. I felt it was very atmospheric, but all that was ruined by the head teacher's booming voice sounding all throughout the school's intercoms. Due to hazardous weather conditions, no student will be leaving the school zone before the blizzard has stopped. My friend Andrew and I sighed with disappointment, thinking how our last day there would be far longer. Not everyone reacted so calmly, however. Crying, yelling and annoyed complaints ensued until Mr. Conroy told us to keep quiet. Andy gestured over to me, telling me to just sit against the wall and wait calmly. I took my overcoat and used it as a blanket, putting it on my back. We started a discussion about Star Wars, something about how underappreciated Darth Maul was. We agreed that he played a massive part in Obi-Wan's character development. We stayed silent for a few hours, just staring at the darkness outside, which was surprisingly even worse now. A few hours later, at 7.07, according to my hand watch, Mr. Conroy looked at his phone went out into the hallways and surprisingly locked the door behind him. We were taken aback by his odd behaviour but did not think much of it up until he was gone for a full half an hour. We were concerned and even a boy started weeping. Andy said it was probably nothing and that Mr Conroy just took a smoke break. Everyone began laughing at his joke. The laughter was interrupted by two very clear screams. It was not a funny scream, it was a blood-curdling yell for help. What the fuck was that? A girl asked, concerned and maybe even scared. That didn't sound too good, I started saying, only to get cut off by an animalistic growl. We all stared out into the hallways through the thin window of the door. We heard more yelling, more screaming, the lights outside got turned off and we heard footsteps outside. Someone was running. Not just a single person. A lot of them. Yelling, growling, shouting for help. The roaring slowly drowned out all screams. 8.34 The sound had stopped. The lights were out all throughout the school. The schoolyard was, the schoolyard was illuminated by a few street lamps. Very poorly too. 8.38 Sam, a girl who felt daring, went closer to the classroom door. She jiggled the handle to no avail. Clicking and tapping came from outside. More footsteps, which were now quieter, but the sheer number of them made them deafening amidst the silence of the school. 841 a massive bang against the door made us all panic, and another, and then another. The glass from the window shattered and fell to the floor. I reflexively put on my overcoat and got under the desk, near the corner of the room, along with Andy. Five seconds later, the door broke down completely. Dozens of students ran in, but something was wrong. They were attacking my classmates. They were screaming like lunatics hitting, scratching and biting everyone. I managed to crawl outside with Andy being right behind me 
We ran downstairs to the second floor. We saw more of them. They screamed at us and ran towards us, manically swinging their arms. They all smelled like corpses, decaying corpses. As fast as we could, we got into an unlocked classroom and hid under the teacher's desk. 8.51 The things outside were banging on the door, shattering the glass and jumping in, with some getting trampled by the rest. Panicking, Andy jumped up, over the desk and towards the large windows which lead outside. He got tackled by one of them, both falling through the windows and out into the cold snow. The creatures followed shortly after. A massive suicide drop from what I could assume. I was weeping and the hot tears froze on my face almost instantly. I was completely distressed. I absentmindedly walked outside, down the stairwell and onto the ground floor. I didn't come across any of them, strangely. As I stared outside into the darkness, only contrasted by the blanket of snow covering the ground, I felt completely empty and blank. I took a few deep breaths. My hands were trembling and my feet were numb. I wore my gloves. A roar came from upstairs, echoing through the hallways. I closed my eyes and started sprinting. I went through the doorway, out into the snow. I slipped a few times, kicking the snow. I was getting hunted down by my classmates. I looked back and saw them biting down on Andy. My friend, my own damn friend was being eaten alive by insane people. I climbed over the school fence, kicking a girl who tried biting me in the face. I started running as fast as I could, completely terrified. My body was burning up. I ran as fast as I could. There's nothing I wanted more than to get home. At 9.42, I saw the lights of my house in the distance. How long was I running around the tiny rural town? I'll never know. My eyes weren't blinking. I was horrified. I reached into my pocket and with trembling hands took my keys out of my pocket. I unlocked the door and got inside. My father, having heard the noise, came to check what it was. When he saw me, he was taken aback. Jack, how'd you get here? It's freezing. Didn't they say we'd come to pick you up tomorrow? I'm cold. I just went to my bedroom. I took off my coat, my boots. I collapsed onto my bed, looking up at the picture of Jesus above me. I got up, took some warm clothes, and went into the bathroom. I took a hot bath and noticed my ankle. It was inflamed, red. I must have sprained it during one of the slips. I finished up, dressed, and with the towel on my pillow, I laid down. I didn't sleep. How could I? I was still trembling. Not from the cold. Not anymore. I was trembling from sheer terror, fear, and perhaps even pain. I was bruised. My ankle was completely fucked. My ears were ringing, and my head hurt like hell. I cried. I'm not ashamed of it. I cried for three hours, maybe more. I couldn't stop. I was incapacitated. At some point, I must have fallen asleep. I woke up at 9.58am. I was met with the same darkness from yesterday. The blizzard had no end. No mercy. I limped my way downstairs and saw a note from my parents. They had gone to the city for groceries. I just collapsed on the couch. I felt numb. It's been two years since then. Today is the anniversary of the pain I endured. I don't know what happened that day, what caused my classmates to become cannibalistic monsters. I've never heard of any of them since. I'm the only person below the age of 20 remaining in the area. Most people moved out of town after their children were found eviscerated, mutilated, and horrifically murdered by creatures cruel beyond any human capacity. The creatures themselves, my ex-classmates included, were found on the scene in an extremely advanced state of decay. 
I fear it'll happen again. Maybe not here, maybe not now, but it may happen again. I fear the snowstorms. I fear the darkness, and I fear that one of them may be still alive, and that it just might come back to kill off the remaining survivor. To kill me off. I just want to thank Mr. Sophistication for allowing me to narrate that story. If you liked what you heard here, head over to their Reddit page and show them some love. I'll leave a link for the original story in the description below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, stay tuned for one more nightmare.